So after watching my spinning triangle tutorial, a bunch of people asked me if I could do a galaxy tutorial, so here you go. I do want to point out that in the timestamps, I've put particles two extra times at the bottom because I want to show a couple of different other ways that you can do the particles. And since it uses particles, here is a different tutorial you can follow if you want a more a realistic looking procedural galaxy. Okay, I can now stop blabbering and let's get started. As is Blender tradition, delete the default cube, Add a plane and in edit mode, remove one of the sides. Then select the remaining side and drag it above the origin. It doesn't have to be too accurate. Using Ctrl R and your scroll wheel, add about 10 loop cuts and again, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Next, leave edit mode and copy and paste this uh, four times to create a plus shape by rotating it 90 degrees each time. Then select them and using Ctrl J, join them into one object. Back in edit mode, extrude one of the inner vertices using E to the origin and then connect the other ones to the center using F. Select these five points and then turn on proportional editing. Press R to rotate and then using your scroll wheel you can also increase the radius that proportional editing works on and create something that looks like a galaxy. Here is what I ended up with. If you've done it right you can hypnotize yourself by spinning it. Next, add a circle and an edit mode, enlarge it to be about the size of the galaxy and then using E, extrude it inwards to get something that looks like a disc with a small hole in it. This disc is going to be used to emit the particles for the smoke simulation, so it's a good idea to make the particles easier to see to set the view to wireframe mode. Go to the particle tab and create a new particle system. Set the end frame to 1 so that the particles all appear at the same time and the lifetime you can change later if you want to if the particles just disappear during the simulation. Also make sure that under velocity normal is set to zero so that the particles don't just jump off the disc. Finally, under field weights, turn off gravity so that the particles don't just fall off the disc. I also in viewport display decided to reduce the size of the particles to make it easier to look at. So now we need to start to add forces to move these particles around. So select the initial galaxy shape we created and go to the physics tab. Click force field and change point to surface as this will make the particles go towards the individual uh, lines that you've created. But as you can see the particles go away from the surface so change the strength to something negative to make them go towards it. It's a very good idea to experiment with different values to see how it influences the particles and it normally it will be different for everyone but I ended up using negative 0.5 as the force strength for mine. To make the particles spin, in the add menu go to forces and add a vortex force. If the force is spinning in the wrong direction just set the strength to negative again to make it spin in the correct direction. I set mine to about negative 1 and it works perfectly. However, so far our particle has been spinning on a flat plane, so to give it some height, add a turbulence force. Move the force a bit off axis to see its effects, and it's also a good idea to mess around with the size and strength to get the look you want. I ended up using the strength as 0.6. Now it's time to create the smoke simulation, so add a cube, and in the physics tab, select fluid and set the cube to be the domain. Size the cube to encase most of the particles, but it doesn't have to encase the entirety of the disk where the particles come from. Now to add the smoke, select the disk and then select fluid, flow, and then change the flow behavior to inflow. Finally, in flow source, change mesh to particle system and select the particle system we just created. And when you click play, you should be able to see the smoke simulation appear. It is also now a good idea to change some of the settings in the smoke domain as well. First, I increase the resolution division to get more detail on the smoke. Then under cache, set the end frame to something around 60, type to modular and enable resumable. But remember that no smoke is going to be simulated when the particles disappear, so you might want to go back and change the lifetime of the particles if you want to. And finally, under field weights, disable both gravity and all the forces. Before doing a test bake, turn on dissolve and set it to something around 5 frames, but you're going to need to test this to see what looks better. Once you have done all this, click bake and see what you get. If you get nothing, it's probably because you either disabled the particles for viewport, or changing the resolution division could fix your issue. Now it's just the case of going back to either the dissolve settings or if you want to change how the particles move to get the look that you want. 
One thing that you'll notice is that Blender has already made a folder full of all the simulation data in the same place that you've saved your project. So, but for the final render, I always like to make my own folder so I know where all the data is. And to get this final data, first increase the resolution division to something like 100 to get a lot more detail out of your final render. And then go down to the cache settings where you have to change modular to all and then set your new destination to the folder you just created. You can now click bake all and wait for the simulation to finish. Once the bake is finished, if you go to the folder you created, you'll see all the needed data appear and in the data folder will be all the simulation data. Before we continue, it's a good idea to pick what your favorite frame is by looking through the sim simulation. I ended up using frame 38 as that's the one I like the most. Now I recommend that you make another save of this project in case you ever want to go back and mess around with the smoke simulations as we're about to make some big changes to this file. Now that you've saved it, delete the fluid domain box as we are now going to be making the particles for the galaxy. There are two main things that we need to change, the amount of particles and how the turbulence will be working. So in that order, select the disk and go into its particle settings and increase the particle amount to something like 40,000. Bear in mind that the amount of particles you will be having depends on your computer and you might have a lot more or a lot less than that amount. Since the viewport is now very dense, I also decreased the size of the particles to make it easier to see. Now when you play it, it will be a lot easier to see how the turbulence affects the particles and as you can see, it's not really noisy enough as you can clearly see the waves. To make it more random, select the turbulence node and increase the size to something like 0.01. I also recommend to increase the strength and also enable max distance fall off to make it more strong in the center and weaker on the outside. And this is what we end up with. This is also a good place to figure out which frame of the animation you like in case you didn't figure it out earlier. You can also bake the simulation if you so desire. Now you need to decide which shape you're going to replace the particles with and there's three main types I'm going to show you and it really depends on how much your computer can handle. The most simple one is a circle with three sides or just a triangle, make sure you fill the face in. The second one is any form of icosphere but we're not going to be using that one since it's going to be very dense and heavy for the computer to run. And the third one and the one we're going to use is a cone set to three edges or just a tetrahedron. The main reason is, is that it's the smallest possible shape where you can always see it no matter from which angle you look at it. As you can see in the triangle, at some angles you can't see it as it's completely in line with it. I did that in order to reduce noise in the final render as uh, in with low resolution renders cycles will have trouble with glow effects and that kind of stuff creating a really noisy image. So let's stick with the tetrahedron. To put the object into the particles, select the disk go down to render, change the drop down to object, and then using the eyedropper, click on the object you want the particles to become. And before you say, didn't you just say, click on the tetrahedron because that's the one we're gonna be using, why did you click on the triangle? Well, that's because when I recorded this, I thought it would be a good idea to show whether triangles were a bad idea. So now it's a bit confusing, but make sure you click the one you want and I will change it to the tetrahedron in a second. Now look at that, that's why I don't like to do it. But in some cases, if you have so many particles there, you must do it, in which case, go for it. As you can see, everything is very flat. So go into rotation, tick it, and increase the randomness for both. You might have to re-simulate the simulation for it to appear. Now here is video of me switching to the tetrahedron as I said I would. Make sure you also change the scale to fit what you want and I also like to have a lot of scale randomness to get a variety of shapes. I like to do quick test renders of the ugly grey particles to see if I'm happy with the sizes I've picked but make sure you turn off show emitter so that you don't see the disk. I ended up using 0.005 for the scale and 0.7 for the scale randomness. Once you have done that, I recommend you make another save of this file and call it Oh God, my computer is about to explode doing these next steps because, well. Now go to the modification tab and select the convert button and wait about five minutes. When that's done, you can delete everything but the particles you have created. You'll probably notice it's a bit laggier now and that's because Blender has a hard time working with a lot of objects so in some cases it might be a better idea to leave it as a particle system but then it just becomes harder to texture it later. Now there is something very important to note right now is that all these separate shapes you've created are all linked which means that as you start to join them they will start to duplicate themselves and your computer will crash pretty much instantly. 
So what we need to do is actually unlink them first before we join them. However, to fix this, it's actually fairly easy as all we need to do is select all the particles and under the object tab, go into relations, make single user and then click on objects and data and that will clear all the particles links. So now we have to join all these particles into one object and probably the most crudest method of doing it, which is what I'm going to do, is using C, select a small area and then using Control J, join them and just repeat this throughout the whole galaxy until after maybe half an hour you've joined the whole thing together. When you finish with that you should have the galaxy as one whole shape and it shouldn't lag at all anymore. However you might notice that the origin isn't in the center so all we have to do for that is to go to the tab mode and select everything and move it over the center over onto the origin. Now save this and you can close it and we'll make the final proper galaxy in its own blend file. In this new project, in the add menu, go down to volume and import OpenVDB. Now go into back to the folder where we made the galaxy smoke simulation and find the exact frame that you chose and select just that frame and import it. If you do plan on animating this then you can import everything. You'll see the smoke appear and it's a good idea to center it into the project. If it's hard to see, just click on the little icon that looks like a green cloud and there you can increase the density. Now to add the particles we just created, Blender has a good feature where through one project you can access the objects or many other features like textures of another project and to do that go into File Append, find the project, select it, click Append and then go into the Object folder and there should be the only object which is the particles. Since they are both from the same frame, they should align pretty well, but you can still have a go with messing around with the rotation and the scales of them. Once you have done that, it's time to give them materials. For now, I'm going to hide the particle so it's easier to work with the smoke. Go to the shading tab and click new material. For volumetrics, Blender already has a small setup going for you. Here, if you increase the density, you'll see the density increase. However, if you're using the noise version of the simulation, make sure you have density underscore noise instead of density written in the attribute section. The first thing I'm going to do is connect a gradient node set to spherical to a color ramp, then connect it to a math node set to multiplication, connected into density, all in that order. We will use the math node to control the strength of the density and the color ramp to control the transition between the different densities inside of the simulation. For now, to make it easier to work with, I decided to connect the factor of the gradient node to the volume just so we can see where the sphere is. If you have the add-on node wrangler enabled, you can click Ctrl T onto the gradient node to add all the needed mapping sections, or you can just uh, directly add these nodes yourself if you want to. Now using the location and the scale sections, try and move the sphere to the center and take up as much of the box as you can without being cut off. We will be using this sphere to cut off the unwanted edges of the simulation as well as control where the color is, and it doesn't have to be too accurate and you can always go back and change it later as I did. You now can reconnect the proper shader. I then added another color ramp node connected to the gradient texture, but this time connected that to the color of the smoke. This is the part where you can mess around with the colors and I ended up going for some blues, a purple and a yellow for the center. Make sure you also mess around with the positions and how the blending works as currently it's set to linear but I like to use B spline a lot. And as I said previously I had to readjust where the circle was. So that's about it for the smoke material and feel free to pause it here to see the full node tree. So now we re-enabled the particles and gave them a new material. Here, replace the current shader with an emission shader connected to the surface. We're going to use the same trick of using a gradient sphere to control how the particles will behave, but instead of controlling the density, we'll be controlling uh, which material is used. So add a gradient node and use it to drive a mix shader between the emission shader and a tra transparent shader. Then like last time, give your gradient texture mapping nodes and make sure it is set to spherical. I also recommend to use the object coordinates as, that, as this will most likely center it. Here again, like last time, move the sphere to take up as much of the whole object as possible and be in the center. Then add a color ramp in between the gradient and the mix node to be able to control how the separation occurs. Now using the color ramp, you can control how the brightness changes as it goes closer and further away from the center but this could be pretty fiddly and I ended up having to flip my whole color ramp for it to work properly, as well as once again mess around with the scale of the circle we used to control it. But with that sorted, I changed the interpolation to B-spline as that's my favorite interpolation and started to mess around with the colors in order to see how the strength of the emission would change. 
When I was happy with that, I wanted to add more super bright stars to mix in with all the smaller ones. So first, I added a noise texture and connected it to the surface so I can see what I was working with. I then added a color ramp in front of the noise texture and set the interpolation to constant. Now by changing how far the white color is along the color ramp and then the scale of the noise texture, you can mask out different amounts of uh, stars that will be bright. I ended up using a scale of around 57 and then the where the white is, is to select how many of the stars you actually want to be bright. It's a fairly crude method, but the effect is pretty good. For now, I'm going to put those two nodes to one side as we'll use them later, and I want to add some colour into this. So all I did was literally just copy and paste the colour ramp from the other material into this. I then connected the original colour ramp into the colour colour ramp, and then that into the colour of the emission, if that makes sense. You'll notice that the colour ramp looks a bit weird, and you might have to retweak some of the colours and even flip them in my case. For the smoke, I also used fairly dark colours, so I had to also brighten up all the colours uh, for the emission. I also switched the interpolation to B-spline, as it gives you a much smoother tr gradient transition between the colours. Now to add the bright stars and get a bit more control over the emission strength, add two maths nodes, one set to multiply and one set to add. Then connect the bright star mask into the multiply, the multiply into the add, and then the add into the emission strength of the emission shader. The multiplication node will be controlling the strength of those little stars, so if you set that to something like 2000, you'll see the brighter stars appear. And the add node will be controlling the overall emission of all the other stars. This is pretty much the setup for the particles, and this is also a good time to go back and mess around with the transparency and the fall off as they get further away from the center. So here is the full node tree for the particles, and feel free to pause it here to have a look at it. Now to make it feel a little bit less empty, let's add some yellow haze to the center. Add a sphere into the scene and go into edit mode. Here, enlarge it to take up the whole galaxy and then squish it to be about the thickness of the galaxy. Then select the three edge circles and turn on proportional editing. Then using S and Z, scale on the Z axis and then use your scroll wheel to increase the size of its effect to create kind of like a flying saucer looking thing. Go back into the shading tab and give it a new material. Delete the normal shader and put an emission shader connected to the volume. Then give the emission some form of yellow color but the closer it is to white, the kind of more washed out and better it looks. Then for a third time, let's do the same trick of creating a sphere in the middle of this texture, so I'm really going to kind of skip over this now. If you're having trouble getting the scaling right, a good idea is to reset the scale of the object by hitting Ctrl A and then click Scale. I then added a math node set to multiply in front of the color ramp to control the strength. I then messed around with the look I wanted by changing the interpolation and where the colors are on the color ramp. But then to add some noise into this and some detail, I put another math node set to multiply in front of the color ramp and connected a noise texture to it. You can connect the noise texture to the surface of the output to get a better view of how the texture looks. I messed around with the scale to get something that looked good and then put a color ramp in between the two to add a bit of contrast and really show where the noise is. And that is the node tree for the texture of the middle glowy disc thing, so feel free to pause it here to have a look at it. And now we need to do some compositing to get it looking as good as we can. My background is already set to black, but you can do it in this tab here. And I also changed the focal length of the camera and where it's positioned to get a better uh, view of the galaxy. I did make a quick render of this just so I can see what I'm working with in the compositor. You can close this window and Blender will keep that image for when you're working in the compositor. Add a viewer node and connect it to the image from the input. You can use a rerouter by either searching for it or by using shift right click and dragging over that line in if you have node wrangler enabled. Pressing V will let you zoom out from this image. Put a glare node in the middle and set it to fog glow. If you set the mix to one, you will only see what the fog glow is doing and it's a good idea to get the threshold values where you want them. There is no real formula here and it's a good idea to just mess around with the values until you get something that you like. By changing the mix value to negative, you can control how it overlays over. So if you want a much weaker fog glow, you can set the negative value to a lot lower and you'll get a weaker effect. Also, don't be scared with completely messing around with how colors, as and you can see with these examples, I decided to just mess around with a bunch of different colors. Now for the main part of the tutorial, this is finished and this is what is done. And you can download this file for free on my Gumroad. However, I still want to talk about other ways of making particles as right now you can see that it was kind of wacky and there might be better ways or other ways anyway of doing it. So the two methods I'm going to be talking about is keeping it as a particle system or using geometry nodes, but I'm not going to go through a step-by-step -step tutorial and just talk about them. 
So if we wanted to keep it as a particle system instead of converting it into a shape, this will allow us to keep maintain the animations and the rotation. So if you ever wanted to animate a galaxy rotating, this will be the best way to do it. The main two problems with this is texturing and the lag. So if your computer cannot handle a, a large amount of particles like mine basically cannot, uh, it's a good idea to turn it into a shape as a, rotating, a large amount of rotating particles is kind of horrible for your computer. And then with texturing, by keeping it as a particle, you lose the ability to use uh, textures on a large array of particles and you have to stick with particles, uh, particle information, which can be like their age and their speed and that kind of stuff, which when, when they're all kind of rotating at the same speed and all of the same age, it becomes very difficult to control. And I mean, look at this. It looks absolutely awful. I mean, I could have spent more time with the colors and everything. But this was like five minutes of work and I think it looks awful. But I guess you could get it to work. The second method has a lot more potential, but I don't think it will work that well right now. And that is to use geometry nodes. I think in the future geometry nodes are going to be perfect for this kind of thing. As they are both super versatile and they barely lag your computer compared to particles. However, as much as I currently know, there is no way of properly using volumes with geometry nodes. What I ended up doing was using the volume to mesh modifier on the smoke sim and then create a couple of these layers to then cover with the geometry nodes. This is kind of a hacky way of doing it and I wish in the future that geometry nodes had a way of working with volumes to make it a lot easier. But this is just a good uh, compromise. What is better is that texturing geometry nodes is a lot better than texturing particles as with geometry nodes you can kind of texture them both as if they were particles and as if they were an object by themselves. You get tons of control about the shapes and the colors and I was even able to use a lot higher resolution stars as more spherical than triangles. And that's about it for this tutorial. I do have a couple of other things I want to say in the outro but yeah, thank you. As I said previously, the working file that I used for the original uh, Galaxy can be found on Gumroad for free. I put it up and some of you might notice that this, this tutorial that I made is kind of weird and a bit of a mix of different I don't know, not voices, but like it sounds kind of weird and is a bit janky in some ways. That's because I'm kind of busy with university right now, but soon I'll be a lot more free and I'll try and make um, more tutorials uh, than my current once every four months. And finally, I want to thank all my new subscribers and all the viewers on my channel because my original triangle tutorial for some reason went through the roof and it's been amazing. And that's about it. Thank you.